we're back with another video. I'm about to start working on the fuel lines right now. Uh, funny thing that I noticed was my line from my boost control solenoid that comes off the turbo was actually pinched uh, right in between this Y right here. That would probably explain why I was sitting at 19 to 21 pounds on base boost with no wastegate, no boost control uh, wastegate actuation. Because uh, the wastegate spring in the um, up pipe is uh, set at 15 so I was kind of shocked why it was at 19 to 21 but uh, that probably explained it so I went ahead and rerouted it came over the top nice and clean good boost source don't forget your zip ties on all these lines because you will blow them off especially when you're running some pretty good boost levels but uh, we're about to get started on these fuel lines so follow along all right so my first removal here is the feed line right here uh, this came straight into the regulator to supply the fuel. Uh, I'm going to bypass this now. We're going to come straight out of this and Y straight into the rails. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this top port here. We're going to leave this factory return. I'm going to utilize the factory return line. And we're going to convert these into returns. But they are going to still be on the pressure side. So I can still keep my mechanical gauge. I can still keep my electric pressure gauge here. Um, and this will all be pressurized to a set pressure that I set here and that should work out perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, so we got this radium uh, quick disconnect, their own little design with that set screw so it cannot push out no matter what. You got to loosen that screw um, to a 6AN. We're going to go ahead and drop a 90 right here. We're coming down and around and I got the line right here. I'm going to go ahead and put the Y on it and basically just Y out to this rail and the same thing Y out to this rail and that's going to be my new feeds all right so we got to remove the plugs on the end of the fuel rails and that is a eight millimeter allen we're going to pop these out and we're going to go ahead and drop in these fittings which is a eight I believe it's a eight ORB to a six AM we're going to drop those in there and start taking my measurements for my hoses that I need to make. And I believe we're going to come off of them with some 90s. But uh, we're going to go ahead and play with them. I bought 90s, 45s, 120s. I got a bunch of different fittings. So we're going to see what makes sense and go that route. Because the rails are not at the same level at the front of the engine. On the driver's side, they sit back further. Passenger side, they sit up a lot closer. Uh, to the front of the car, so we're gonna see what makes more sense. But I'm gonna drop that in. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the intake off, make it a lot easier for me to get that other one. Also, don't forget when you're working on the fuel system, unplug your battery, don't chance it. It's a lot of money to be burning up not only your life, wasting your life, but uh, it's a lot of money. I don't want to have to be replacing everything again. So we'll sit that intake down there. We're going to go ahead and grab this, pop this cap off as well. Lubricant on these seals. The fuel sometimes works pretty good, but let's see how it starts to sit. I'll decide if I need something else. No, it looks like it'll be good. I can use the gasoline that's coming out to lubricate it. It's E85 anyway, so we're all switched over. I'm running on E85, so we're gonna get these set in place. Kind of a hard spot to get my my crescent in there so I don't scratch them but we're just gonna use a socket it's a 22 mil I'm gonna just cinch them up a little all right so I've been tinkering with this for a while the way I want to run it um, there's a lot of stuff 
stuffed in the back over here um, and everything's just getting in the way I do not want to pull the motor apart so what I ended up doing was I had two pre-made lines from the original radium uh, pump kit that did the crossover from the um, the siphon tank the, on the saddle gas tank they gave you uh, special lines that would connect the left the right to the left um, when you're using their fuel pump setup so it actually worked out pretty good where both the lines that are pre-made fit actually right in the same spot so so it came out 90 these are all pre-made came under the manifold and up to the radium Y the second line which is a little longer actually worked out pretty good like I said I'm not happy with the routing but it will do good for now and I can address all this later because I am on a time crunch but it's coming up over here it actually goes right underneath this you can see this right here drops down straight into this rail 90 I still have the original uh, exits on the rails which a little hard to see but right here they have the radium swivel fitting um, those are still connected they come up and they go into the regulator right here so but now we're coming straight out of the feed I just knight it over and I'm gonna have the Y right here I can zip tie that to the AC line just something to keep it out of rubbing on anything I don't want any of my lines running near the turbo just because I don't have any heat sheathing or anything like that and this area is going to be very very hot uh, most of the time so I'm happy with this line I think what I really want to do is be able to route this line run it around the back over here even possibly doing a T in where I can just grab this one and actually come down and bring the feed straight off the rail right here um, so bring the feed right here and actually just have a fitting and it'll just jump up T into this rail and then just keep coming across and T and, and go right into that one I think that would be a pretty nice setup and like I said still keep the lines minimal on the engine um, so so yeah I'm gonna just tighten up the fittings I just got it all in place hand tight just to check fitment uh, I think we're gonna rock with this position and Quite honestly, it makes my job a lot easier because uh, not having to make new lines. fittings tightened up so we're gonna do a fuel check I'm gonna go ahead and prime the pump and we're gonna check for leaks so uh, I gotta put the negative back on don't forget to do that that'll definitely help so everything looks good I think we got everything tight that's tight this is tight Everything's looking good, so let's drop that negative back. I'll be interesting to see if my fuel pulsations are gone, because that was definitely one a concern, but two a very big annoyance when you're driving around. Because at idle, you could definitely hear it. All right, negative is on. Tighten that down. So, looks like my light's about to die, it's starting to flicker. But let's go ahead and prime the pump and let's see, see what happens. So, got my light plugged in. Uh, that battery died, so I got an extra one. So, we're looking at this fitting since I just added this one in. Everything feels good on there. Gonna come down to that Y. Gonna check 
check this guy out. Feel around. I don't feel any fuel. Everything's just dry. We're gonna come back up here to the front and check this out. Don't feel any fuel there. Come over this one. Everything looks pretty dry here. So these lines were made by radium. So they were the fittings are already pre-installed. So this is not push lock like I normally had. Uh, these are actually, I believe, I believe there's Teflon uh, lines. So um, yeah, everything looks good. Shouldn't be any leaks from any of the lines that I've already ran that I've been running for over a year. I'm gonna go ahead and prime it one more time and then we'll see about getting a startup. Well, spoke a little too soon. Fuel pressure after I keyed on and off about four or five times just to try to run everything through. Looks like the fuel pressure is indeed dropping. But it is not dropping from a leak that I can see. So my regulator's always done that. And if I don't have any leaks, then I guess, uh, yeah, the radium says in their pamphlet, their little uh, owner's manual, that they're, just because the fuel pressure drops does not mean there's something wrong with it, but uh, that's definitely kind of weird. going through some parts I got lots of parts everywhere but I have a 73 millimeter KS tech intake right here this bad boy we're gonna go ahead and run this since I can't get the dime mod working we're gonna see if this will fit with the ETS front mount and I can rescale my mass airflow since that is the route we're going for Texas 2k because I'm having so much trouble with that die mod software, I'm gonna have to reach out and see because it's running fine on my old software. So we're gonna see if this 73 millimeter KS Tech intake give me a little more room to be able to scale that math because I'm already maxing it out. All right, so I got the KS Tech 73 millimeter intake on here. Still got the mass airflow because of the die mod software. Uh, I'm having some issues with it. I need to reach out and see maybe I got a corrupted file. I did not put the ethanol sensor in. I do have the fittings and whatnot to add it, but uh, as of right now, I'm not happy with the way the fuel system's routed, but it will work. Uh, I'm gonna have to redo all this, but I don't wanna do it right now. So I already showed you guys how I routed everything. We've got the mass airflow. I'm gonna rescale it for that so I can run more boost. Um, everything's looking good. So we're gonna go for a spin. And we're gonna do some tuning tonight and my goal is to get the E85 map dialed in um, on the low boost and then start working my way up and we'll see if we can set up uh, three boost levels I want to run the wastegate pressure on intelligent mode uh, probably around 21 to 22 pounds on sport and sport sharp is gonna be We'll see where, where we're going to stop at, but around 20, I would imagine 26 to maybe 28. This is the stock three bar map sensor from the 08 pluses. So 
we are limited to 28 pounds it's literally maxing out the sensor so we're gonna see we're gonna see where everything lies but uh go take it for a spin we're gonna watch that fuel pressure now and hopefully we got a smooth one-to-one -one ratio raise for every pound of boost but the uh, needle definitely looks way more stable than the way I had the system routed before so once again I like the simplicity I like the how clean the system looks but uh, definitely having some issues with the tuning with that rail setup so um, I would advise you do the traditional way or even leave your factory regulator and um, and routing. <laughs>